Well, hey, y'all, welcome back. My view on the view, the MVMO. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. That's my other chair. <laughs> my view on the view, the MVOTV podcast. I'm your host. Thank y'all for joining me for another after the show chat. Okay, let me be clear. I've got the date. You know what? Shout out to all my women who are ladies who are going through, you know, you're you're getting really close to the change. And so, you know, these memory Like, what was I, you know, all these memory issues come into play. So today is Friday, (laughs) November 17th. Thank y'all for joining me. The show today was really, really good. Am I mistaken, guys? Didn't the announcer lady today, because today was show was live, so it wasn't pre-recorded. She announced some other people that were supposed to be there, but they weren't there. So I don't know. Maybe her, maybe her announcements are pre-recorded. And, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. But I was like, only Miguel Cordero. Is it Cordona, um, the education secretary, which every time he comes, he's he's generally a good guest. You know, he has a lot of pre what we call it, guys, uh, you know, uh, kind of cookie cutter type answers to stuff. And is very rarely to, kind of like when the White House press secretary comes to the show, uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, she too, like when Jen Psaki used to come. Uh, or she w- it was m- more doing COVID, so she would be there via s- uh, Zoom or whatever. But these folks always have very cookie cutter answers, like pre-written or whatever answers. And so it's very difficult, I find, for the, the f- to have real conversations with them on the show. Um, you can ask them things, but then they kind of go back to, let's say if you saw them on other interviews, they go back to you to the same kind of thing they've said on every interview that they've done that day. And I generally, I don't find these people interesting, but they talked about something today that I'm going to talk about. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I, I'm glad that they actually brought this up with Miguel. Okay. So there was a whole lot that stood out in today's show to me. Now we are all different. Let me just preface my remarks by saying we are all different. So some things that I'm going to talk about that stood out to me may not have stood out to you. And there will be some things that stood out to you that did not stand out to me. And I really want all of us to start doing a better job respecting each other's viewer experience. Like I had a lady go off on me a couple of weeks ago. I just blocked her um, because anytime people can't respect that I have a different viewer experience, I don't even know why they're here. Like I am not you. So why would I have seen the show the way you saw? So there was some person who was on the show and I was like, this person was totally not interesting to me. I totally got up and went into the kitchen or I may have gone to the bathroom. It just depends. Right. And this lady like went off on me. He was great. He was so great. I can't understand why you, I was like, oh my God. So let's not try to make each other. Y'all have each other's viewer experience. Um, the, the great thing about this is that we are all different. Okay. Okay. I actually want to start with Miguel. Okay. All right. Any of you in the listening audience, former um, educators like me, or maybe you had a public service, like uh, uh, you, you did something in maybe the military, you know, some type of public service. I will tell you, and I know they've revamped it now, but it's too late for me, but I will just tell you when they talked about this morning, you know, all the, the challenges that educators have, they mentioned like the public uh, service student loan uh, forgiveness. To me, that whole program, that public service loan forgiveness uh, program is a sham. Every single person, and I mean, every one person is a cop. Every single person I know who applied, this was before, like I said, the revisions, uh, before these COVID revisions and all that. Every person that I know that applied for a public service student loan forgiveness, they were always rejected. I myself applied twice before my loans were paid off twice and I was rejected too. So it is just, it's almost laughable. Um, maybe if you know someone or you yourself apply for a public service, uh, student loan forgiveness and you actually got approved, you know what? You are blessed and highly favored. Okay. Cause the rest of us, it just was a no go. And so I know one person who even reapplied during the COVID time because, well, you know, they had loosened up, you know, this and they were going to be more inclusive and all this kind of a thing. And she still got rejected. So it's just really crazy. So I was thinking, you know, there's so much to overhaul with our public school systems and the world is changing so rapidly. You know, now teachers are going to have the challenge of AI and, uh, you know, all this kind of a thing, which is going to take you know, uh, you, you know, did the, this kid really do this work or did they not, you know, so it's just a, a whole new set of challenges that are on the horizon for educators. But 
I think this guy's doing a pretty decent job. And the women were very pleased with him as well. Joy told him, you get an A, an A from this teacher. So that was, that was good. But like I said, he's generally a good guest. Okay. Oh my goodness. You know, the breaking news happened yesterday. So they talked about this with George Santos. This really stood out to me because I'm telling you guys, I personally, as a U.S. citizen, was disgusted with the fact that George Santos, well, he still has a job as of right now. Although they talked about the Republican House Ethics Committee has filed a motion to expel George Santos. Um, so who knows, maybe by the end of day, you know, I don't know, maybe next week or whatever, he may not be there. But for me, as someone who they talked about uh, Congress's approval rating being at 13 percent, I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, because most of us are just like tired of these people. We are so disgusted by their lack of integrity, their lack of character, their lack of really caring about their constituents who they are there to represent and do work for. And it's just a bunch of crap. So George Santos was like, kind of like the poster child for this is why I'm so sick of all y'all for me personally. And to know that he might be expelled, honestly, guys, and maybe it's false hope. I, I had a shred of hope when I learned the news yesterday. I was like, oh, you know, maybe, you know, just maybe. Um, I did not know this. They did talk about yesterday him spending his campaign, uh, his donor dollars on Botox and OnlyFans. But they also said he took an overseas trip somewhere and spent $6,000. And um, I also didn't know something that Sarah mentioned this morning, which is that before this dude even got into office, before he was even elected, his staff that were working for him, like on his, he was like preparing to run. They wrote a 141 page vulnerability report, basically saying, this guy is a liar. You are a liar. You, <laughs> Sarah said they, they, they were concerned about his, his ability to tell fables, you know, and stories. And it's like, why wasn't that taken seriously? So, you know, you saw it this morning, the women were talking about the fact that these folks need to be vetted better and guys, if that ain't the truth, I don't know what is. So I did have a little bit of hope there. I thought, okay, you know, uh, let's see what else I write down that stood out to me. Okay. There was too much talking over each other this morning when they were talking about George Santos. It got so bad to where, uh, right before Sonny read the legal note about George, uh, <laughs> Joy was like, okay, 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 okay. Y'all are talking too much over each other. But I'm like, girl, the horse is out the barn. See, that's the difference y'all for me between when Whoopi moderates versus when Joy moderates. That's why I always have said these almost six years now. For me, I see Whoopi as the mama and Joy as the big sister. You know, she's the big sister who is friends with, uh, you know, Sunny. She's friends with with uh, Anna. She uh, absolutely adores um, Sarah. And so it's hard for her to, and she hangs out with Sarah, with Sunny and Anna a lot. So it's kind of like trying to manage your friends almost. It just never really works out. It's very hard because you wear those two hats. Today, you're the boss, but you know, you're also their friend. But see, Whoopi is not like that. Whoopi does hang out. Uh, I've seen her in, when Anna's in town there in New York, I've seen Whoopi take Anna to events with her, like different things. But in terms of like hanging out with the group, I mean, Whoopi has an only, Whoopi's only done one behind the table podcast this entire season. And we're now almost into at the end of November. So, and, 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 and actually Anna addressed that at the end of the show today, which was really funny. They had to bleep out what she was saying. But, um, so Whoopi has a, 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 a delineation between I'm working with you guys versus I'm going to be hanging out with you all the time. So they kind of look at her differently and they respect her more. And when she says you guys are all talking over each other, they tend to kind of stop talking, uh, stop doing it. But when Joy said that today, like other times when she said it, they just kept on talking, <laughs> you know, and it's not because they don't respect Joyce because, you know, well, it's hard to see your friend as your boss. You know what I'm saying? It's just the way that it is. Okay. Let's see what else stood out to me today. Okay. The Golden Bachelor. Okay, I was watching The Golden Bachelor and I was so glad that it was only an hour because the other Bachelor series with Charity that I had watched was like two hours. And I was like, I am too old to sit. I, I mean, the, if I hear one more person say like, I'm going to scream. <laughs> you know, like Megan would say like, like, like. And I guess when I was these folks age, um, talking about the uh, the younger ones on The Bachelor, I too, I'm sure in our generation, we had some word that we said a lot. But I mean... Charity said, well, it's like, 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 and even the guys were like, 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 and I'm like, if one, one more of these young people say like, I'm just going to like have a fit. I mean, it's like, please look at me now. I'm saying like, 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 right. 
So I was watching The Golden Bachelor because this is just revolutionary television. And they were talking about how Gary broke down after he felt guilty about, you know, being intimate with, he may have had sex with both of them. We don't know. At the very least, we know it was because he was in fantasy suites last night. At the very least, and there's two women left, at the very least, he was heavily petting with both of these women. He broke down in tears. And so Joy was saying, this guy cries way too much and all of that. You know, they talked about, you know, this because I actually thought up until maybe 15 years ago that when you got older, your sex drive kind of dwindled. But I have learned from having older women in my life that that is just not true. One of the ladies I've talked about, Miss Dorothy, before to y'all in our walking group, mo- there are only two of us that are like the, we, I was at one point the only the youngest person in the group. OK, at my age. And then there was another girl that joined. So then she and I were kind of somewhat in the in the um, she's 53. So she's a little bit older than me. But at any rate, the other women are like. And they're 74 to 80. Miss Dorothy is the oldest at 80. Miss Dorothy has a boyfriend and they be getting it in because she tells us about it. <laughs> and guess what? Her boyfriend don't have to use no Viagra. Now, the other woman's boyfriend, uh, well, all of them have just about, if, if he's not like their boyfriend, he's like the, the guy that they call their maintenance man, ladies, you know, when they need a little bit of maintenance. Okay. But um, one lady, her boyfriend does have to use Viagra, but Miss Dorothy's boyfriend, she told us, she said he always kept himself in shape. He always worked out and that has paid off in his old age because he can do the do and he can get it up. She said, and he didn't have, (laughs) and he can keep it up too, according to her, but I digress. I digress. So all of us who plan to live a little bit longer, you know, um, and we are doing the work to take care of ourselves now. Just know it's going to pay off <laughs> in the end that you can have a vibrant sex life up until your 80s and beyond. And I think that's wonderful. You know, I have, I'm have i a big fan of Gwyneth Paltrow. When I first found out that Gwyneth Paltrow and um, uh, Beyonce were not best friends, but very, very close friends. Well, I think they call themselves best friends. I started looking at her and paying more attention to her. And I actually uh, like the fact that she tries to do all this healthy stuff, but they talked about, you know, choosing because her husband is more like her, her dad. And they talked about that. And I can say that's true for me. Babe is, he reminds me a lot. He has a lot of qualities that my dad has. Okay. And the last thing that stood out to me, they talked about this whole Santa mess, (sighs) the gay, the bi, the trans, the disabled Santas uh, or Christmas ornaments, I guess you could call them. Well, some of them were Santas. You know, here's the bottom line. And that conversation was really interesting. And I am so glad that I've matured to the point where I can actually listen to someone who has a different opinion than me. And I don't need to say what a lot of you say to me, which is, oh, I respect your opinion, but, and then you go on this whole diatribe. No, I can, I have grown emotionally and I can say, I respect your opinion and put a period after it. Like, I don't need to go, I don't need to tell you anything. I don't need to go into a long story about what happened to me when I was a kid. I don't need to tell, like, I don't need to do any of that. So even though I disagree with the women's take this morning, I was perfectly enjoying their conversation because I have grown and it takes emotional growth to hear someone who has a different opinion and actually leave it alone. And most people can't do that. There was a time when I couldn't do that. I felt like, well, I need to well, explain to me and do this. I don't need to do that anymore. I'm like, cool, cool. I love that we can all see things differently and hopefully we can just leave it there. But I'm going to tell you all something. Joy made a great statement this morning. She said, because it's like Fox News that was like, she said, does do the people at Fox News know that the whole world is not white, straight and something else she said. And I'm like, that's so true. The world is made up of all kinds of people who are living all kinds of lives that look very different. And we just all need to respect that. And my, my thing is, if you want me to respect your take, then respect my take. You want me to leave you alone, then you just leave me alone, you know, but most people cannot do that. I'm telling you, I've even seen it here. Most people don't have the emotional fortitude to just say, okay, you see it this way. I see it that way. And that's it. They go on long diatribes. They get angry. They start doing a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, I just encourage all of us to grow a little bit more uh, because I'm telling you, it does pay off, you know, in your life. So anywho, today's show was really, really good. They had to make fun of Brian (laughs) because today Anna's going to be on the podcast. I can't wait to hear that podcast because the ones with Anna are my favorites. Okay, guys, I got to get out of here. I got to go to the store. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.